Hey, this is Steven with Gravitate, and today we're going to be talking about using UTM parameters and enhanced channel grouping in analytics to better understand your traffic. This is going to be a little bit more of an intermediate or advanced tutorial, so if you are new to Google Analytics or don't know what UTM parameters are, um, some of this stuff might not make sense at first, or you might want to do a little bit of reading to kind of understand some of the details in here before getting started. So if you are looking to get more sophisticated with your tracking and you have a bunch of different marketing efforts going on, maybe you're running Facebook ads, you're running Google ads, um, you're doing local SEO, you um, have display and you have all of these different channels that are driving traffic to your website. One of the challenges with the default channel settings of Google Analytics is that they really generalize some of these um, into buckets that may not be super helpful. So for example, if you are ever um, in Google Analytics and you're looking at your uh, channel, you know, you're trying to get a breakdown of where traffic is coming from and you're, you're noticing that, oh, well, we have a lot of direct traffic or hmm, we just sent out a big email blast and I'm not seeing email traffic in here. Or, wait a second, we have social media, but we also have paid social, and how is that getting broken up? So, what I encourage you to do before um, any of this custom channel grouping that we're about to discuss is look at the default channel definitions within Google Analytics. Um, you can just do a quick uh, Google search for default channel grouping analytics and get these definitions. And the way that Google will try to group your channel is through a few different conditions. So for example, social media, um, it's gonna try to pick up that a user is coming from a social profile but that's not always the case and that's why Google and many marketing people would recommend using UTM parameters to really define the medium that the, the traffic is coming from. And in this case, there is a set of conditions where it's looking for um, the medium either being social or social network or social dash media. Um, it's really important to know that these things are case sensitive. So when you are doing your UTM building, make sure that the format that you follow is pretty strict in that um, you're not using a capital S or a lowercase s when your definitions don't require that uh, to be that way. So you can see, for example, um, one of the goofy things in here is that paid search um, the medium matches pay-per-click and one of the tricky things with this is if you are running Facebook ads and you decide to put your UTM medium as PPC or pay-per-click because you're paying for the click um, well that's going to get defined as paid search when in a lot of um, people's minds you'd want to reclassify that as paid social so that's the, really the problem we're trying to solve today is how do we better group our channels so we can make better marketing decisions, do better analysis on that channel traffic. Um, so we're shifting budget around to the right channels, we're giving proper attribution to goals. Um, so lucky for us, there is an option in Google Analytics to create your own custom channel grouping. Um, now, it's important to understand that the custom channel grouping is not retroactive, so when you do set this up, it's only going to impact any of the traffic coming into your view or your personal view moving forward, not retroactively. If you wanted to do analysis on you know, the last three years, well, you might have to use different methods to parse out the traffic. So in your admin setting of Google Analytics, all the way under the view settings on the right hand side, there are actually two areas for custom channel grouping. I don't know why it is broken up this way, but um, 
what you need to know is that the custom channel grouping setting under personal tools and assets is essentially just going to display to you as a user accessing the property or accessing the view where the channel settings are at a view level meaning that they are accessible by any user who has um, privileges to look at this view so they do this exact same thing but uh, one is um, more of a public facing or you know internal facing um, level of permissions and the other is just you know maybe you as a you know just a marketing specialist want to know this stuff and you don't really want to share that I don't know why you'd want that to be the case um, but you can create the channel grouping in either of these areas and get the same effect I recommend um, promoting it to the view setting just in case you're um, ever in a pickle with getting access to your account so what we can do is look at an example here of what I put together for enhanced channel grouping. Um, by default, there are a number of system defined channels, but I wanted to show you what I've done um, here to really break up traffic in more of a detailed um, view. And this can be done in really any way you'd like but this made sense for this specific uh, property and the specific um, analysis that we're trying to do. So, for example, organic search. Um, maybe we want to break up organic search from local search. So if you have Google My Business efforts or Bing Places or Maps, things that you're trying to um, break out separate from just organic search, then what you can actually do is set up a few different conditions so that um, your organic search traffic is going to be system defined, but um, it does not contain the medium of local. And then on the contrary, with local search, you can define that as medium containing local. So if you go, design to our Google My Business um, profile. Looks like we're missing our UTM parameter there. The idea is that if we have the medium containing local, so if we go to this UTM builder and put uh, medium containing local, well the idea is that um, it will pick up as local traffic, not organic traffic, um, so we can do better reporting and I think that's kind of nice. Other things you might want to do is like previously mentioned break up paid social from paid search. So you could define paid social as medium contains paid social. Um, notice how there's no hyphen here, there is no uppercase. These are things you're going to want to write down and define in another document. Um, we have other Advertising, there's affiliate, um, these are all system defined. Um, and it, as you get more sophisticated, maybe you're throwing in a little bit of connected TV with Hulu ads, or you're doing more programmatic display, um, and you can add different channels that way as well. Okay, so hopefully you're still sticking with me. Um, there's another nifty feature with this channel grouping and that is breaking up the non-branded and branded terms. So I want to show you what that looks like. Um, you can actually create another layer with your um, channel definitions to where you are saying that, hey, we want to track um, this specific channel as um, basically anything that is not related to our brand term. And you can do this one of two ways. Looks like we have it set up to where we're just saying the keyword does not contain and then brand name here. And then if you were to look at the organic branded um, keyword contains brand name there. Um, if you have variants of your brand name, maybe you have acronyms or um, maybe different versions or, or products that you want to exclude or include, there is a brand term setting within the channel grouping. And you can just 
paste a list of your brand terms in here and when you're creating your channel grouping um, there is an option to reference these branded terms so with all of that being said creating these UTM uh, templates and UTM parameters can be a little daunting I have a spreadsheet that I started working on which helps to find these different channels mediums campaigns and whatnot um, the real important thing for what we're doing here today is mainly the medium but the source as well and anything beyond that is just getting more detail if you want to down the road have more detail on the um, specific campaign or content of the ad that you're running or effort that you're you know driving traffic to the website from campaign content and term give you more detail um, so this is just a spreadsheet that I put together which basically calculates all of the um, different fields in here and puts them into a link so if I were to update um, you know this link to test um, this gets me a pretty neat um, easy you know link that I can just throw in there Google has a version of this um, it's totally free to use you just Google UTM builder and you might stumble across this link and similarly you can go in here and adjust the URL the source the medium campaign name and get this link um, you can also shorten the link too from a, a bit.ly um, connection which gives you just a you know a, a cleaner shorter link with all you know without all of this squirrely uh, parameter business at the end and if this is uh, feeling a little intense and, and you feel like wow that was like a lot for one view well the magical thing with this feature is that it is one of the few things within Google Analytics that you're able to share across properties and across views. So what I mean by that is that when you are done creating your custom channel grouping, you can actually toggle over here to actions, share this template and import it into another view. That is I don't know about you but really really nice because it will allow for you to create one really really solid set of conditions for your channels and be able to apply that to a similar business to a similar property without having to do a ton of that technical nitty-gritty work you can also look in the solutions gallery and share this um, more public facing that that's not something that I uh, have spent much time looking at. Um, I really want to know the ins and outs of my channel grouping and that's just not something I do. To cap things off you might be wondering okay this is all great now how do I actually look at this stuff? So you can do this in a number of ways to get the new channel grouping visible within Google Analytics. I think the easiest thing to do is to find any area that um, you see here that says default channel grouping. You'll actually get a drop down and you'll be able to select um, any of your new groupings that you have created and look at the traffic and this will give you a little bit more of a detailed view into um, you know where your traffic is coming from based on your definitions. So I hope that you found this helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or reach out to us via our website. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day and happy channel grouping.